Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Optimizing Mother podcast. Today, it is an honor to be with Mrs. Dini Greenberg, Shulcha in Shanghai, across the ocean, different time zones that I had the schuss and honor to get to know while she landed up in New York for a few months. Um, and it is such a pleasure to have her here on the podcast. She's a shlucha, a mother, runs so many programs in her Chabad house, so much experience, yumtif and preschool and shiurim and whatnot. So welcome, Dini. It's an honor to be here. Thank you. And we also wanted this episode to be a Rafua Shalema for Henya Bas Bracha Devora Lea. Yes, and we heard that she has amazing Chinuch insights herself, so we'll just mention them to be as chus for her. Very interestingly, um, on her island, she likes to call kids by their Jewish name. And uh, another interesting thing is that she would have hamatash bakes and kids in the kitchen, and that was her way of gently encouraging them about kashras. Um, so many, so much of her programming is obviously done with love. And, uh, that's really what our podcast is about tonight. So, Mirza Shem, this will be Liz Chus or Fushlema for her. Quick and easy and miraculous and Me'ala Teva. And Mirza Shem, Shnaz Hakel. It's really Me'ala Teva. It should really happen soon. I look forward to hearing good news. Mirza Shem. Amen. Amen. So, when we reached out to you about coming on the podcast, you know, your first response was, let's do this with love. Let's talk about loving and with love. Let's talk about that for the mothers of Beis Rifka and whoever's going to hear this. So my question to you is, and we're jumping right into this, is that you wanted to have a conversation of with love. And it almost seems like obvious, like parents naturally love their children. Like, why do you feel like this is something we need to emphasize and talk about and focus on? You're right. It's a great question. <laughs> of course, we love our children and we're connected to our children, believe and benefit in deeper ways than they can ever imagine until their parents themselves. Marissa so as parents, we know that the big question is. In the thick of a real shas chinuch moment, right? When it takes all we've got to keep it together. Do our kids really know that? Do our children feel that we love them unconditionally no matter what? That's really what we'd like to focus on tonight. We're specifically discussing being loving and supportive during challenging or even just very busy chinuch moments. I have a mommy moment that I remember from years ago. Uh, where I had a cute little toddler trailing me when we were trying to get ready for a three-day um, Yom Tif. And Baruch Hashem, there's a lot to do. And everybody knows what that means. We have laundry, we have guests, we have uh, food that has to be cared for. And I thought I was the best mommy ever because I'm going to do everything with her. So together we went to the, you know, to make all our clothing baskets and to sort everything. And then suddenly dump. And I look at her and I'm thinking, this is interesting, but maybe it wasn't on purpose. You know, maybe I didn't understand something. So we got on to the next task and she's sitting on my lap. And this was the computer land days. And here I am checking my emails, making sure everybody knows, you know, what time to come and make sure we invited all the guests. And suddenly the screen goes off. She pushed the button. (laughs) So I'm thinking, okay, maybe, you know, I'm really not doing my best. So let's do this together. So I opened it again. And here I am letting her press, you know, enter with me. And I'm telling her, I'm inviting all these people that have such wonderful kindlach that are going to come and play with you. And boom, there it goes again. So I thought, okay, so this is really not working. Let's go to finish our yummy, delicious cake, (laughs) right? For dessert. And we're mixing together. And of course, I put it in the oven, close the oven, ding, the oven goes off. Now I realize, okay, this is a chazaka. I've got to understand something here. So I looked at her. And put on my lap. And I said, is there something that you'd like to tell mommy? And she looked right back at me, didn't miss a beat. And she says, mommy, are you happy? So I said, of course I'm happy. I'm so happy even to do this together with you. Look at all these wonderful things we're doing together and to prepare for Yamta. And she says to me, so mommy, can you please smile? It was incredible. It was just really understanding 
that to her, all this busyness meant you're very distracted. Do you still have time for me? Do you still love me? Am I really so important to you? And that's really the test of faith for our kids. That's what we want to discuss tonight, how they can feel that we love them and we care about them no matter what else is going on. You know, it's interesting. We have these kids, right? And like, there's a lot of things in life that you get trained for and, you know, that come with instructions and these neshamas are thrusted into us, these precious neshamas. And there's like no mommy manual. You kind of have to do this. You have to figure it out. You have to ask people. You have to, you know, there's like a certain amount of effort that goes into just how do we understand the nefesh of our children, you know? And even if we do Baruch Hashem have good role models, or we spend time in a chinuch role with children, let's say, sometimes we find that, surprise, our kids are completely different, <laughs> right? So here's also a tip. When we don't know what to do on the spur of the moment, and we're left like literally, you know, mouths hanging open, we can always think to ourselves, hmm, if that were the neighbor's kid, how would I react, <laughs> right? And that helps us to really understand um, what we can do when we're, when we don't have that mommy manual in front of us, we're not exactly sure what we could do. So seriously though, if it's the way Hashem set it up, then that's the way it's meant to be. So we have no guilt and, uh, we just have to move forward. We really need to figure out how to do it. And we have so many Baruch Hashem. We have so many sources and resources today that we can reach out to find out what to do that even if we feel that we're not naturals, we can always get the right help and set us on the right track. And this is not, we're not only talking about like deeply challenging moments, even day-to-day life situations. So we recently were in New York. We had a little journey coming back to China uh, due to Corona. So we were in New York for a whole school year. And we had a very interesting situation. Um, this is a place that we, we're always dreaming of going, right? When we're in China. We're always looking forward to when we go to America. And here we were, and we had everything that we had always imagined we would have back home. And for some reason, the kids were still not happy. And I really couldn't understand it. And as long as I couldn't understand them, and my chinuch was, we could see the best in the situation, and aren't we lucky that we're here, Baruch Hashem, and this is where we ended up, and look, you get to go to real school, and we have, you know, we were, we were in Crown Heights, we have the Rebbe, we go to the Ayah, we have 770, and we, Baruch Hashem, have our family and our grandparents, and there's kosher food, there's pizza and ice cream. <laughs> That's I mean, what I thought you were going to say first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to put in order, huh? <laughs> But here it was, I had some very unhappy children and I just was not getting them. I wasn't understanding them and I wasn't responding, I guess, in a loving way. And so they kept resisting. They're like, but we're just not happy. Don't you understand? It's not us. It's not us. And um, finally, I realized that I need to take that time out, that break. I need to go out of myself and find the solution for them and find the solution for our family. And it was a very funny one. We realized that we just have to bring back what we're familiar with. So we invited all our neighbors for a challah bake. It was amazing. Thank you, Shelly, if you're listening. We invited neighbors from down the block to get to know them. And they were so nice. They reached out to get to know us. And we had sushi nights together. The switch and the change that happened in our family when I understood the needs of my children and they realized that I understood them was incredible. Suddenly everybody's doing better in school. Suddenly everybody's willing to make friends. Suddenly those little things that bother us don't bother us so much. And the truth is that's really the way the Rebbe educated us. Life is really supposed to be fun for the kids. There's so much going on. We have rallies, we have Tzavos Hashem, we have Mavsayim, we have Pa'olas, we have Chesedosh Yom Tavs, we make for brangas and parties. And here we have Avas Yisrael, we can make sushi nights and challah bakes in whichever way that it works for kids. And when we bring in the positivity and it's just flowing in our house, it's incredible how it fills the cup, so to speak. And we see that when children are busy with positivity and are given leadership roles, they feel valued. 
And they get that same internal satisfaction and deep happiness that we do as adults when we're doing things for other people as well. Beautiful. I want to comment, if it's okay, Mrs. Greenberg, two things. One of them is that you shared about what if it was the neighbor's tip. I seem to remember a story of Rabbi Lou that he wrote into the Rebbe about how, you know, he shouldn't use strong disciplinary tips or something, or maybe, you know, it was even stronger than that. And the Rebbe said, like, would you lift your hand against someone else's kid? And then the Rebbe said, your own child is really not yours. They're almost like lent to us by Hashem to take care of. That was one story that came to mind. What I also want to comment on is that I'm listening to you talking about what worked for your children and you put thought into it, period. You put thought into it. This is like, you know, like the Hayyam Yam says that you're supposed to spend a half a day, half an hour a day thinking about the chenach of your children. That is what is so beautiful that you sat and you thought and you problem solved what's going on here. And you came up with even a Ruchnistika solution, which was also fun with them. But it's the idea of what are you doing for a half an hour a day to think about your children to help them with this goal of Chinuch with love? Mm -hmm. You know, some of us might feel like we're not naturals and we don't really know how to do that, right? The truth is, though, if we're given this privilege, we're given this inborn talent, even if it's not fully developed. We just need to uncover the talent, right? And we know that there are a lot of stories of even our kids, like we found that they have, uh, they're musical or they're creative or, you know, they're artistic and we never saw it in them when they were younger, but suddenly that inborn talent comes out. So we just have to know and realize that we have it in us. And if we feel like we don't, again, we can reach out. And just like you mentioned the Hayyam Yayim, maybe that's the Avas Yisrael that everybody could have and sharing tips with each other because We're really in this together. Our kids are going to affect each other, right? It's one world together. Your kids are going to affect mine and my kids are going to affect yours and Merit Hashem in wonderful, positive ways. So we all have the right to ask for help. We all have the duty to reach out for help. And it's an amazing feeling of achdus that we're all in it together. You know, we started talking about like chenok with love and you know, speaking about thinking of their needs and and taking care of their needs. I'm just curious, do you feel like this is a little bit like 2022, you know, like modern day (laughs) lingo, like it's all about love. Like, is this really a Yiddish, Hasidish thing? Or is this like a modern thing? And we're just like jumping on the bad wagon to like figure out how to make our kids feel loved and, and take care of their needs. So it's both. Firstly, about love. Yes, Avas Yisrael is a very Jewish thing. (laughs) It's the core essence of everything we were taught. And regarding jumping on the bandwagon, I think we started the convoy. The Rebbe already taught us decades ago that the times have changed. And along with that, the natures have changed. The problem is that it's very hard for some of us to understand or swallow. The problem might be that for some of us, it might be hard to understand and swallow. Especially if we were raised on good old Yira and Kabbalah Sol and just do what you're told, right? It's a very different generation. But if anyone needs convincing, we actually heard the Rebbe say in a Fabringen that we have to be mevatel, the generation gap. Actually, could you believe it? We have to do away with a generation gap. It's fascinating. The older generation and the younger generation have to be in sync with the chinuch. It's printed in Svadri if anybody wants to check it out. So it's really the the Rebbe says. What does the Rebbe say? The Rebbe used the terms bitul hamusag shel par hadiris. Okay, just do away with the whole concept of a generation gap. It's over. And now we have to acclimatize ourselves to that. So even the good old us, okay, let's be honest with ourselves. Would the older generation way really work for us right now? What do you think? Okay, so I hear what you're saying in the sense that like it happens to be um, in the various hats that I wear. I get a lot of criticism, constructive criticism. And I think what you're saying is not so much that I can't be told anything, but that 
it really makes a difference how somebody says something to me. Like, you know, with camp or anything, when someone comes yelling and screaming, like I almost like shut down. I'm like, can you say the same thing gently? Like, is that what you mean? So if I'm hearing correctly, when you feel that it's really well-meaning, right? In your best interest, you're open to hearing, right? You want to know that the person has your best interest in mind. Not just that they want to give you a piece of their mind, eh? (laughs) You're open to hearing and you're open to listening and you're open to learning. We all enjoy learning from other people. It's just a matter of us understanding what their intention is. And then we're much more open to listening and to learning and to understanding. So when it comes to our kids, the Iker Nakuda is really here. When we want to tell our kids what to do, or we would like to gently guide them through life, we need them to know and to feel that it is really with their best interest in mind. It's because we love them and we want the best for them. There's no other motive. There's no power struggle here. There's no ego alert, right? And again, let's think of ourselves. Let's pretend that we're the child who did X, Y, and Z. Okay. For a toddler, it might be wreaking havoc in a dining room. Um, for a tot, it might be um, wreaking havoc in a different way. Okay. Um, it could be a mistake. It could be impulsive. It could be just the wrong judgment or a follow the leader thing. And your mother or parent reacts in a way that you feel is in their best interest, not yours, right? Um, you might feel that they're against you, not with you. What are your feelings? Are you opening to listening? Do you feel your parent loves you? Do you feel like loving them back? (laughs) So from tat to teen, it really goes across the board. What, What are we saying that helps them understand that our intentions are pure, really, really just for their benefit because we love them? Let's change the scene, right? Let's say there's the mother that comes over, hand on shoulder, eye contact, hug, whatever it takes. And she says, I understand we have a challenge. I'm here with you. We're going to tackle this together. I believe in you. I love you. What would our reaction be? So basically, if I understand what you're saying, you're saying, how do we get our children to feel loved even while we're educating them? We should basically treat them the way we would want to be treated if we made a mistake, like as an adult. There we go. So basically... When I want to educate a child and have them feel loved, this is what you're saying, and feel like I'm caring about them, I would have to like almost like think if I was that child, what would help me be open to that chinuch moment? Basically, like when love flows, chinuch flows. Is that what you're saying? There you go. (laughs) And it really helps for us to put ourselves in that situation. If I were that child, how would I want to be treated? Right? And that's basic Ava Sistro. We do to others, but we really would want them to do back to us. Actually, I had a very interesting discussion once with a woman who interviewed me uh, for a university in Eretz Yisrael. She said she interviewed many shluchais, so it could be that other people got this question as well. At the end of the whole discussion, she says to me, so I really just want to know, what's your real goal? Like, what do you really want? And first I was thinking, like, what is she saying? Like, what is she trying to get to? Is there some, you know, preconceived idea that she has in mind? And then it just hit me. I'm like, we really have just one goal. It's plain Avas Yisrael. We're here to help everyone and anyone emotionally, physically, spiritually. And shlichas is chinuch. It's across the board. So you're saying that's the way our children need to feel, that we're really here for them and to help them and to support them and love them. In whichever way necessary and in every and any situation. Okay, Mrs. Greenberg, Dini, I want to challenge you for a second, if that's okay. <laughs> Do Go you, for it. <laughs> you know, for now, I told them I've been like, just, you know, going along with you, love, 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 but really. Do you really see that the Rebbe supported this chinuch with love, like specifically chinuch with love? Like, is this really a thing? So in the Ferengen, the same Ferengen that the Rebbe speaks about being mevatal, the generation gap, right? The Rebbe says, V'aid ve'ikar, she'chinuch mitach ava gluya, matzliach yeser, mi'chinuch mitach yira v'fachad. 
Oh, wow. Okay. Which for bringing again? What was the no. source? This was Hisfa Duyais, Tafshin Nun, Chelek Gimel, Amud 194, 5. Free translation. The most important thing is that Chinuch with obvious, revealed love will be much more successful than Chinuch with year of a fachad, awe and fear. Or maybe we could translate that to stern discipline. The truth is that we have treasure troves of Hiras from the Rebbe and Chinuch. And we know that it's the ultimate and absolute truth, and it's going to be 100% effective and successful. And there are more, book, more and more books coming out now as the years go by. There are WhatsApp groups and podcasts, but I think it would be so great to have an easy and clear ready-made manual for the guidance that we need. What do you think? That would be amazing. Wouldn't, yeah, wouldn't it be great if everyone who's listening to this, um, if any of our listeners have already done workshops or classes with down-to-earth tips that are simplified for busy minds, um, on the Rebbe's view of Chinuch, if you can share it with us and maybe we can collate this and send it to print. And here we would have something that busy us can have readily accessible and easily available for us to understand and apply in our day-to-day life. Things like this. For example, I saw a very touching letter from a woman who was having many difficulties with her children and she felt she couldn't handle it. It sounded like she was barely surviving. And the Rebbe writes to her, very interestingly, the ikker is that you're getting nachas from all your children, meaning even all those whom you think are giving you challenges, hmm. they are really giving you nachas. So what does this mean? Does this mean our glasses are, are fogged and we're seeing them the wrong way? Or within the challenge, we'll see the good and have deep nachas from that? It's very interesting. Wow. And then... Listen to this. The Rebbe advises her. Trachtgut v'zayngut applies here. And it's clearly understood that when one views their children's behavior ba'ayin tova, with a good eye, naturally the behavior or reaction towards them will also be good, like with a positive outlook. And how much more so the way one speaks to them. Oh, interesting. And it's probably connected. How you look at them will advise how you speak to them. There you go. And if we really respect them, we will react appropriately and they will respond accordingly. It's fascinating. And I'm also wondering if the tracht good itself brings the vetzayin good. You know, there's a lot of, um, you know, we learned that just the avaida of trachting good already invokes the bracha. And I'm wondering if that applies here too. Absolutely. Why not? In other words, the whole idea of the tachain is that as a reward for having betach and you get the bracha. So I could imagine here, that's what the Rebbe is saying, like think that your children will have amazing outcome and that actually will impact their outcome. Absolutely. Oh, and here's the last line. The Rebbe writes, and what we can accomplish with words of Kirov is clearly overwhelmingly greater than what can be accomplished in behavior, meaning our reactions in the opposite way. We know how the Rebbe phrased things. <laughs> it's almost like the Rebbe is saying that when kids do something wrong, like the work is on us, like it's our issue. Like we have to work on seeing positive in our children and that will impact their behavior more than anything else. And that's what's going to yeah. make them change. Exactly. You're right. The Rebbe is saying exactly that. We need to change our speech and behavior to our children. We need to speak and act towards them respectfully and they'll respond in kind. So interesting because Mrs. Greenberg, when you told me you wanted to do a podcast about love, literally like a day or two later, while I was still like thinking about it, I was learning something totally different. And I suddenly stumbled upon this from Sikhas in English. I quote, all these efforts to disseminate Hasidus and Judaism in which we work as emissaries of the previous Rebbe should be carried out with true Ava Sisral peacefully and pleasantly. This indeed was the way the previous Rebbe conducted himself as the following story attests. There was a Jew of Hasidic stock whose grandfather, a Hasid of the Tzemach Tzedek of the Rebbe Marash, was a great Torah scholar. The grandson, too, was learned and possessed many abilities. He, however, strayed from the right path and became irreligious. Yet the previous Rebbe once wrote him a letter in which he addressed him with very honorable titles. Hasid, God-fearing, right? Hasid, Yerushimayim. Mm-hmm. Now, the previous Rebbe had met this person, spoken to him, and knew exactly what kind of person he was. Indeed, this person made no attempt to hide in misdeeds and everyone knew his spiritual standing. Some people therefore asked the Friedrich Rebbe, how could he write such titles about such a person? The Friedrich Rebbe replied that Rambam rules that the true desire of every Jew is to observe all the mitzvahs. 
but sometimes his evil inclination overpowers him. Thus, the previous Rebbe said the true spiritual standing of the Jews as it should be. And therefore, it's impossible for the Rebbe to differentiate between Jews to give one Jew's titles and another not. And again, I quote, we see from the story that the free Rebbe's approach regarding every Jew with love and fond regard, recognizing the qualities of his soul. And with such an attitude that we must carry out the mission of disseminating Hasidus and, and Yiddishkeit entrusted to us by the Rebbeim. So this must be, whether it's the person on the street that you're doing the same with, your student in school, and I guess your own child. You got it. And the Rebbe role modeled it to us as well. If we think of how the Rebbe spoke to everyone with such respect and care and love, and the message was very clear. It was, you're already amazing. You have it in you. Here is a gentle reminder or support that you might need. It's such a powerful message to our kids. I love you. I respect you. I believe in you. And of course, hopefully they'll feel the same way about us. <laughs> so love is really the basis of Chinuch. And you're right. When our hearts are open and the love flows, the Chinuch will flow too. Recently, there was a story going around with Rebbe Zinchai Mushka and how she treated with such love and affection a cute little troublemaker coming from uh, Dr. Feldman's office. So that also showed how the underlying principle of chinuch with ava applies across the board. The little boy said that he was so astounded and overwhelmed by the love that it really inspired him to change. <laughs> wow. It was incredible. Okay. So I know I keep pushing you, but I'm going to push you again. You know, chinuch with love, thinking about our children's needs. Rabbi has all these letters about love, but like, so that's it. Just bye. Bye, Yara. No discipline, no Yara. Like, you know, what are we really trying to say here? Obviously, we have to love our children. Where's the Yara? Okay, listen, we're not writing off education, okay? We are talking about chinuch, and we have room for consistency, and we have room for training, and it's all about educating and guiding our children throughout life. But sorry, you teach Tanya. Right? You wrote a book about Tanya. So we're all comprised of 10 spheres, but some of them are more dominant. It's the same here. We need Ava and Yira. There's Ava Sashem and Yira Sashem. And in our generation, the Ava is the primary force. It's Yira Mitaich Ava. Oh, we can find an excellent place for Yira in our generation. Yira means awe. Our kids need to think that we are awesome. <laughs> we understand them. We believe in them. We love them. We're full of Yira. We're awesome. And that's the opening for a true and everlasting chinuch. Okay, so then what I'm hearing from you is that we need to love our children. They need to feel it. Even when we're busy or normally would want to be stressed out, you know, making the time, asking for help, trying to understand and fill their needs. Also, sometimes there's room for consistency and Yira, but all with Ava and all with love. It sounds like a tall order. Do you have any okay. practical tips? <laughs> so let's us? simplify it. Let's simplify it. Okay. Let's take three points. Number one, we just treat them like we want to be treated. That's it. Number two, if it's hard for us to figure out how to do that, Let's pretend it's the neighbor's kid, <laughs> right? How would we react to the neighbor's kid? Number three, and this is key. This is Saif Ma'asab Makshavat Khila. We are really not alone. We have our Rebbe at our side. We can ask for help. We can ask for support. We can write everything and ask for brachas for the right guidance, for the right directions, for hatzlacha bako mikolko. And we'll see the bracha flowing. Wow, I think you summed that up really, really beautiful. Um, I like that. You know, treating them how we would want to be treated when we make mistakes and, and just the neighbor's kid and asking the river for help. I love that. And the truth is, you know, we have our limited time. And, but there are hours and hours and hours for bring-ins where the Rebbe spoke and the Rebbe really does give us guidelines. Like we have to immerse ourselves 
in our own Tyra. Like we have to immerse ourselves in the Rebbe's Tyra and Chinuch. It happens to be, I do know of some books that already came out, you know, the Rebbe on Chinuch, and I know some books that are in the works. And the truth is it, it takes effort. It does take effort. And that's why we do invest. And that's why we do need to reach out to our experience, mentors, mashpiyim, people like you. Um, and you. <laughs> and I do like your idea of what you were saying before about that anyone who has experience or figure it out, share. Like we almost need to make like this shared Google Drive or resource center of you know, practical based on authentic true sources. It could be that someone's already done this. So if you have done this or you know of this, please reach out and let us know so we can share it with everyone. And I think we should pull together our resources. And there's a fundamental basic that we didn't even mention yet, which is literally about and Kahas mm-hmm. printed it and the Rebbe wants us to learn it. Mm-hmm. And the truth is a lot of what we, I learned in Klal Echenach really reflects what you're saying, that when an educator yells and scream, he loses respect in the eyes of the person he's educating or building the person that you're trying to educate with words of praise. Like we and the read. children will accept discipline if they know it's from love. Right. About that. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's almost like we're saying this is really a call to learning our sources, to for bringing, to keeping this up and You know, any resources that exist, if you know of anybody, you know, let's share. And Mrs. Greenberg, if you can actually share, when we share this podcast, we'll share that quote from the Hisvadiyas, Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. Ava Glea, that we could really just remind ourselves that whatever discipline we have to do, it can be with love, with a story, with a smile, so that our children really feel that. And that even the Kabbalah all is with love. Because I don't think we're putting down Kabbalah Sal. It's necessary. We're saying that Yira has to happen, but that it's done with love. We're teaching how to do it with love. And by the way, this was all predicted. This wonderful generation of uh, Geula, it's called in English, the brazen generation. And we're just reacting in kind. If this is a Geula Dick way, then we're also going to be Geula Dick. We're going to respond with Chesed, with Kava Chesed. <laughs> so Mirz Hashem, as we guide our children through life with the Ahava Gluya, we will bring our brazen Geula generation to the real and complete Geula, maybe today. Wow. Thank you so, so, so much. Um, and, I, you know, this already, I feel like it impacted me and I hope it, li- it impact our listeners because, you know, love is something, yeah, we naturally have, but bringing it out to the forefront when we speak, having that in our words so that it comes across intentionally. Um, and may we all be benched with Nachas and Hatzlacha with all of our children. And yeah, let me be to the final Geula. Thank you everyone for listening to Amen. another episode. Amen. Subscribe and share with your friends. Thank you. See you soon in the Shanghai section of Yerushalayim. <laughs> <laughs>